Greetings friends, and I hope this video finds you well. This video will be detailing my basement uh, man cave accent wall. Um, as you can see, this is a wall that I use to display things, as well as we use it for our podcast set. This is what the wall looked like before anything was done. It was just an extra desk space. Um, here you can see the blue tape and lines on the wall. So I went and I found the center point and where we wanted all the panels to line up, as well as marked all the stud locations and the blue tape on the ceiling and on the floor is so that we knew where those were at all times. And here you can see my buddy Darren who helped me a lot on this project. Thank you, Darren. Uh, cutting the, the two by twos. They're actually about one and a half by one and a half dimensional. And this is what we're going to attach to the wall to give us a little bit of standoff, not only for lighting to go around the edge, but also when we put the wooden dowels in to hold the shelves so we have some space for those to sink in and be able to hold that weight. Here you can see Darren attaching the two by twos all around the perimeter. We stayed about an inch and a half from the lip of where the panels are actually going to be. That way we have room to run the LED lights and give us a little bit of a drop shadow effect. And we wanted to make sure that this was going to be very secure, um, not only because there's going to be shelving and everything like that hanging off of this, but we're using three quarter inch plywood, which in itself is very heavy. We intentionally left the bottom open so that we can run wiring down behind the panels. As you'll see when we put in the light fixtures, we fed those through the one of the holes and then that allowed us to run them all the way down so that we could uh, plug them into the sockets. Here you can see me painting the wall and I used like a light gray color. I forget the exact name of it, but this is the color I eventually want to paint the entire basement. So I went ahead and painted this that way. It would be the same color. Um, whether you could see through those holes or not, we weren't really sure, but definitely around the edges and just wanted to make sure that, uh, that, uh, it wasn't going to cause an issue later on. And it's much easier to do it now before we put all of this on there. I bought three different stains because I wasn't sure of the exact finish and how it was going to show up on this particular plywood. These are all Minwax. The middle one is an oil based and that is the one we ended up going with. You see, I just really like the way it lets the grain shine through. Uh, the one on the left, you can see we did a couple of different coats and then uh, a single coat near the edge there just to see what the difference might be. But ended up going with the oil based. The other two were water based and I'm really glad we did. Thank you. 
Here you can see Darren ripping down the sheets of the plywood. This is a three quarter inch uh, birch plywood and it has a really nice grain on it and it looks awesome once it's stained. Once everything was cut, we did a quick test fit just to make sure uh, everything was lined up before I drilled all of the holes for the dowels. So I figured making a jig would be the easiest way to mark all of the holes for the dowels. I ended up doing a 12 inch uh, spacing on all of the holes. So you can see here the jig goes all the way across. I have everything laid out just like it's going to go on the wall. So this allowed me to measure, mark, then I can move the entire jig for each row and make sure everything was exactly where it needed to be for all four rows. This is the tool that I bought to be able to drill all of the holes for the dowels. So you attach your drill to it. You can put whatever bit you want in there. It makes it to where it stays nice and straight. It's spring loaded. You can set the stop on it. It also has a little handle where you can adjust angle and things like that. So this is something that you can use over and over again for many different projects. I've seen some people use uh, like a wood jig that they've made themselves. But this is something I know I'll be able to use again in the future. So if you're interested in this, I'll put it down in the description. Uh, if you want to check it out. So I was using a speed bore bit and uh, did pretty, pretty good on all of these holes. I just went nice and slow. So I just, I didn't blow out a big chunk of wood on the back side of the plywood. Then I followed that up with my uh, router. I just have a, a standard roundover bit, went around all the edges on the plywood and uh, inside of each hole as well. Once the routing was complete, I just used my sander, my orbital sander, and hit it with some 220 grit sandpaper. Once I was done sanding, I vacuumed everything off and wiped everything down with a wet towel and then let it dry for just a little bit. And then I used a staining sponge to apply the stain uh, over the entire board, make sure I got into all the cracks and, and, and all of the holes for the dowels. And then at the end, you can see I just went everything, whenever went over everything with just a nice uh, single pass, just to make sure everything was nice and even. Let that dry for just a few minutes, and then took some paper towels and wiped off all of the excess stain.
I also went ahead and applied some stain to the wooden dowels. And once I cut them, I just came back and stained the cut ends. And these are one inch dowels that will be used to hold the shelves uh, along the panels. Now it's time to install the LED light strips before we put up the panels. So I went with the Philips Hue light strips. I've used these before. I have a bunch in my basement already. So I got two of the regular light kits as well as four extensions. This allowed me to run one up from each side with two extensions on each. And I ended up cutting off the last section for each um, as they crossed over in the middle. Um, and these are pre-marked. They have a, a, a cut line on them so that you can safely cut them without destroying the strip. And here you can see this is one of the connection points. So I kind of folded them over onto themselves so that there wouldn't be any break in the continuity of the LED lighting. Now it's time to hang the panels. Um, I did stain these in my garage and I left them out there for a few days just to air out a little bit since it was an oil-based stain. It had a pretty strong uh, smell to it. For the lighting fixtures, these are the bulbs we're going to be using. I bought these at Home Depot and you can see there's they're like a vintage style, but they are LED. They're a 60 watt equivalent. Um, and you can see there's diff three different ones. And then we also got the, the Edison plug-in pendant kit. Um, and what we did is we threaded those through the black iron pipe um, and we did a different length for each one. And then we dropped them down one of the holes and all the way down through behind the panel so that we could plug them in. These lights are plugged into a TP-Link mini smart switch. That way I can add them to my Google Home routines along with the Philips Hue light strips to be able to change uh, the light strip color and then turn everything on and off. These do not change. Um, they are set color and temperature, um, so you cannot adjust that. So that's why I put them on the smart switch so that I could add them to the routine and be able to control them in various ways. I'll put the link to the TP-Link mini smart switches that I use also in the description. For the shelving brackets, I'm using black iron pipe, a uh, half inch, I believe. And you can see here, I, I put one together just to test fit to make sure it was gonna line up where I wanted it. And then I assembled the other ones. So I needed four of these for the shelves. And then I also used a support in the middle, uh, as you can see in the later shots, uh, for the long shelf that went all the way across. I used these half inch galvanized tube straps to secure the shelves to the black iron pipe. Uh, not that they would probably move much, but the being so long, especially that top board, and this was a two by 10. Um, I just didn't want it to warp or kind of curl up on itself. And this just makes sure that it's not going anywhere. Here you can see me test fitting our podcast desk, which is also the same style as the shelving, but we did put a glaze coat on it. Um, so if you're interested in how we created the desk or the shelves, here's an example um, of what we did to do that. Um, first, I started off with the round over bit, rounded off all of the edges, and these are just some small shelves that we're gonna use on the panels, uh, but we also had the longer ones as well. Um, so rounded everything off, sanded it, wiped everything down, and you can see me taking the torch uh, to to scorch it. Then I wiped everything down again. I'll eventually put some like uh, beeswax or some mineral oil or something on these just to give them a little bit more of a, 
a shiny uh, coat. Um, they're pretty dull right now, and I still need to do that. As you can see, we have plenty of room to add more items. We can also move our shelves and our signs and everything like that around. That's the beauty of having those, the DAO system. We can, we can swap things out and move everything around uh, if we get bored with it. I've got different size shelves already made up. I have foot, two foot, uh, then we can also make longer ones if we need to. So I really love this system. You got the fixed shelves on the bottom, and then the DAO system on the top. And then when we're not using our podcast desk, it fits right in between all of the shelves. And when we're ready to do our podcast, as you can see here, it's on wheels. We can pull it out, flip it around, and we're ready to go. Here's a look at the, uh, the outlets that we put in. This passes through from the outlet that was on the wall and gives us everything we need to be able to hook up whatever we want on this accent wall. If you want to see this set in action, the link to our podcast will be down in the description the dudes with beards podcast uh, i greatly appreciate you watching this video please uh consider subscribing and liking i would greatly appreciate it